Hey Vine Community, Jeff here again, and this is going to be my fourth and final video in my series of what I found and got while I was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina recently. Um, so yeah, so originally I went to one store on the way to South Carolina, and then I stopped in the Girder store, that was my second video, and then the third video was we went to a store called Kilgore Trouts, and then this time, fourth time, we found a flea market. So there was a store in town, and they also had a booth at the flea market. Flea market was huge. Never been to a flea market this big. It was huge. We practically got lost in there. But the fun thing was, we walked in one side. It just it does this whole big thing. We walked in, and there was a record booth right there, first thing. So my wife left me, and then later texted me and said, I don't know where I'm at. I'm lost. And so I turned on my little tracker and I went and found her and it was huge. So the record store that we found, we thought was the one that we were going to find that has a store and then they have a booth. Turned out to not be that. I started talking to the guy and um, whatever. But this guy had a booth and it had probably a few hundred albums. They were all mixed kind of everywhere. Um, they might have been up at a quarter. I don't know. I was looking in the new bin. The things that I found that I ended up buying were in the newly received bin. And everything else that he had there, he had some decent stuff. And he had some stuff that I might have wanted to move on. But I really thought everything was overpriced. Um, even the ones that I bought were overpriced. But I'll tell you how that happened. I literally walked away from the booth after looking at everything. Walked away. Didn't buy anything. Had no intention of buying anything. Um, he had, what were some of the things I didn't get that I would have gotten? He had like Elf, an Elf album, the one about burning sun, close to the sun. Um, and it was an original pressing, but still he wanted like 40 bucks for it. He had, he had some 80s type metal stuff, stuff that I had, nothing, nothing major there. So there weren't anything like that I left behind that were like grails, just some interesting things. The things I bought were, you know, like I said, they were the first things I put aside to buy and then I walked away. I'm like, I'm not paying that for that. Went around the whole place, came back. So anyway, I'm talking to the guy and I'm like, I mentioned, I said, are you related to whatever the name of the other store was? He goes, no, he's about five booths down on the same side. He said, but he's only open on the weekends. That's why I'm thinking the store was open. Maybe it was too early for the store. I don't know, but, um, but he's only open on the weekends. This was like a Friday. So he wasn't open. And then he mentioned, I said something about, yeah, we were going to the store. He says, no, he closed his store not too long ago. He sold the store. So he's only here and he's only here on the weekends. So I'm like, okay, well, good thing we didn't go looking for the store. I talked to him for a while, looked through a lot of his stuff. And then, like I say, went back about my business, went through the whole store. On the way back out, I thought... I, we swung back by there because that's where the car was. And so, you know, I made a joke and said, hey, I found my wife because he knew that I was looking. And there was another guy there and they were talking. So I started talking. We started talking records and online stuff and do this and do that. And then they pointed out that the guy down the booth that wasn't open, but on the weekends that he has, he is way overpriced and he sells everything like first editions and it's lots and lots of money. They talked, they both talked about how that guy down there is so overpriced. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy here is pretty overpriced. <laughs> um, so he he mentions it. So he didn't find anything. I said, well, there was a couple of things, but I, I just, I'm not making a move on him right now. And so, well, here, I'll show you. Alex Massey, Attack of the Neon Shark. Just an obscure instrumental only album. Though there is one song with Jeff Scott Soto singing vocals, but it's mostly an instrumental album. Alex Massey uh, started the band Massey in like 87. And then he had an album in like, 88, which I think is the one that I have. And then in 89, he put out an instrumental album. So this actually back in the 80s is the first album I bought by him because I was big into instrumental music at that time. And so I purchased this album. I think I had it. I might have even had it on cassette. I remember having some of his stuff on other stuff, but he was on Metal Blade Records. So, you know, it was pretty well, pretty well known. This one is still in the shrink, though it was open. So I left it in the shrink. So that's why it's kind of looks kind of bubbly and shrink though but that was kind of cool um and like i said it's mainly instrumental it's got frankie benali on drums which is really cool because this would have been in the heyday of quiet riot and like i said jeff scott soto sings one song there's one song with the vocals and then the rest of it instrumental and alex is one of those he's one of those 
shredder type guitar players back in the day. So I was buying a lot of that stuff. The Joe Satriani's, the Jason Becker's, the Marty Friedman's, the, you know, all of that stuff that Shrapnel Records was putting out. I was buying. So of course I bought this one. And then I had the next one that came out like the next year was Vertical Invader. And I had that one too. I think those were the only two instrument albums he did for a while. And then it was quite a few years later before he started doing more. But yes, it was in great condition. And so I grabbed it. Now, anyway, I'll go on. I'll move on. The other one, and both of these were in the new releases, is Octopus by Cozy Powell, an album that I have always had on my wish list, but never see in the wild. I found Tilt in the wild a while back, but and again, it was in really good condition. And so I that was one of the ones I wanted. This one uh was cheaper than that one, but still I I, I didn't want to pay what he wanted for this. So again, I had them, I put them back. So then as I'm talking to him and this other guy, and then I said, well, yeah, you know, I'd kind of looked at these, but I'm not ready to make a move on them. I pulled them back out and the guy said, uh, I'll do both of them for blah, 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 which was almost half of what they were combined. And I'm like, well, I'm doing that. So I did that. So they ended up being definitely in my price range. They were way cheaper. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and made the move on these two. Felt like at least I'm supporting the guy a little bit. And yeah, two great albums, you know, that I wanted to pick up. And uh, and then they, they were also sharing with me a, a group that they talk to and communicate. There's another record store and this guy ships everywhere, but he has like a Facebook group and there's a lot of them in there and they talk and blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of neat meeting other people and uh, discussing records and stuff and, and, and all of that stuff. So anyway, that was it. That was the, and like I said, the other store was closed, so I didn't have to go looking for that. So I think I hit most of the bigger area vinyl record stores in that area that were at least able to be seen in the few days I was there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.